There's a form of cell division called meiosis, and this is the cell division that is used when an organism is going to do sexual reproduction. Now, it is properly pronounced meiosis, like I just said, but I have found, both from my own studying of science and when I've been teaching students, that a lot of times they have a hard time hearing the difference between mitosis and meiosis, the two basic kinds of eukaryotic cell division. So I've figured out a way for myself and for my students to help hear that slight difference, because mitosis, M-I-T-O-S-I-S, is used for doing cell division to make two identical cells. So that's, I emphasize the I there. The mitosis is used for cell division for making two identical nuclei. Now, meiosis, notice that slight missing T? It's spelled M-E-I-O-S-I-S. So I slightly emphasize the E because meiosis can be used for sexual reproduction, for making gametes like sperm or eggs, which are used for making babies because you reduce the number of chromosomes. You can kind of hear the E there, and that allows you to help remember the key significant differences between mitosis and meiosis. So let's dive a little bit more into it. The whole idea here is that you are going from a diploid cell cells that have pairs of homologous chromosomes, one from mommy, one from daddy, and you have to create haploid cells, the gametes, like sperm or eggs. So in the process of meiosis, you go from having one diploid cell, in a human cell that would be a cell that has 46 chromosomes, to having four haploid cells, the sperm or eggs, that have 23 chromosomes. Now there's two parts to meiosis, cleverly named meiosis I and meiosis II. Meiosis I is the key part of meiosis because this is where you can have recombination of DNA. That's where you're swapping a piece from dad's chromosome number 17 with mom's chromosome number 17 in a process called crossing over. You also have the separation of the homologous chromosomes. This is what generates the haploid cells that are necessary for the creation of gametes. Meiosis II just takes the individual chromatids that make, make up each chromosome and separates them. It looks a lot like mitosis, which I'll discuss towards the end. Let's take a look at this very simple explanation of meiosis here. And here we can see a normal cell. Let's pretend this is a cell of a, some creature that only has two chromosomes, unlike the 46 that are in humans or the 110 that I think are in cabbage, whatever. That would just be too crowded. So let's go with these two. In interphase, Right at, towards the end, you undergo a process or the part of the cell cycle called the S phase where you copy the DNA. And now we have our chromosomes, each made out of two molecules or chromatids of DNA. So during meiosis I, you pair them up and then you separate these homologous chromosomes. Then meiosis II, you wind up having our individual gametes here with only one copy of each chromosome as opposed to the two that were in our starting cell. Now let's look more in depth. Here we see our interphase cell. You can see the DNA is still spread out in the chromatin form. Now we wind up going through prophase one. Now this is one of the things that you'll notice about mitosis and meiosis. The names of the different steps are very similar. Mitosis begins with prophase, meiosis begins with prophase, but you have to add in the one or two. Otherwise, bio teachers like me will sit there going, ha, you're wrong, and mark off your papers if you miss that key one or two. So in prophase one of meiosis one, we have the nuclear membrane breaks down, we see our chromatin goes into the visible chromosome form, and we start to have this process called uh, crossing over where you have parts of the homologous chromosomes exchange. Now, in this, we have a chromosome number of four. We have four chromosomes in this cell, and we can see that there's two of the small homologous chromosomes and two of the large homologous chromosomes. And I'll use convention of using blue for daddy's DNA and red for mommy's DNA. Now, after prophase one, we have metaphase one. Metaphase, remember, is when they're in the middle. So metaphase one, we have the homologous chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. Now, what winds up making this uh, very important step is that we'll have the pairs line up in the middle. And we'll see here, again, here's our metaphase one. We see the pairs are lined up and then the homologous chromosomes get separated. So this little guy is separated from the other little guy. This big guy here is separated from that big guy there. That's in anaphase one, they get separated. Last in telophase one, 
we see the nuclear envelope starts to reform and will have cytokinesis occur to separate our two daughter cells from each other. Very commonly, you'll undergo a process called meiotic interphase, which is when the DNA in our two new cells loosens slightly so that you can read off the genes needed to control the next step of meiosis, meiosis 2. So uh, meiosis 2 looks a lot like mitosis. And so we'll have prophase 1, nuclear envelope breaks down again, uh, we tighten up any of the chromosomes that have been loosened up into the chromatin form during meiotic interphase, and our spindle fibers start to form and attach themselves to our chromosomes. Metaphase 2, part de. Metaphase 2, we line up our chromosomes now along the metaphase plate, the middle of the cell, and this time we don't need to do any pairing of homologous chromosomes. In anaphase 2, they separate from each other. And then in telophase 2 and cytokinesis, we wind up reforming our nuclei, and we now have our four daughter cells as required by meiosis. And these will form into sperm or eggs or whatever kind of cells are needed. Now, we're going to go ahead and watch a video on YouTube that will show all of these processes, and it really will help you see that it's not something where they go jump, jump, jump from one step to the next. It's a continual process. So let's go ahead and make this full screen and get it started. So here we see our cell, and here we see the nucleus inside the DNA is starting to tighten up. That means we're in prophase 1. And so we start to see our two large, and in this cell we have a chromosome number of six, so three pairs of homologous chromosomes. So now during this process of coming together, the DNA will be exchanged. Now in this case, the graphic artist just kind of erase the membrane as it breaks down, and then he'll just kind of make the colors shift. But in reality, they're physically exchanging parts of their DNA structure. Over here, we can see the kinetochores of the centromere of each of these chromosomes, the attachment points for the spindle fibers. So now, the spindle fibers have attached, and they're pulling the chromosome pairs, the homologous pairs, to the middle of the cell, often called the metaphase plate. Once they're there, we'll enter into anaphase 1. We're now in metaphase 1. We're now going into anaphase 1. We separate the homologous chromosomes. Each chromosome is still uh, composed of two chromatids at this point. We're now beginning cytokinesis, and we'll start to reform our nuclear membrane during telophase 1. Uh, in this case, the artist chose not to do it. Now we'll begin meiosis 2, we begin with prophase 2, we're starting to attach our spindle fibers to the chromosomes, we move them to the middle, that's in metaphase 2. We separate them in anaphase 2, and then once they're at the opposite poles of our new cells, we start to reform the nucleus during telophase 2 and do cytokinesis, and we now wind up with four cells, each with half the number of chromosomes of the starting cell. That's meiosis. All right. So if we go back to the slide, I wanted to show you real quick a comparison between mitosis and meiosis just to help reinforce some of those key differences. Because I know that a lot of times we bio teachers love to ask questions, comparing and contrasting meiosis and mitosis. Also, I'll show you one of the other things that is a very common trick question. A lot of times we bio teachers love to show a cell that looks like this or like that and ask, what stage of cell division is this in? The thing to look for is look for pairs of chromosomes. If you see them paired up, a double line here versus a single line, that means it's meiosis. You never have that double pairing in mitosis. Remember, mitosis, you go from having a particular number of chromosomes, one, two, three, four chromosomes here, and I have one, two, three, four chromosomes here. If they tell you the number of chromosomes, the normal number of chromosomes for a particular cell is, say, four or six, or 22, and then at the end, you wind up with that same number, 4, 6, or 22. That's mitosis. If they tell you the normal number is 4, and then they show you this, where there's only 2 at the end, that's meiosis. So, again, mitosis, you're making two identical cells. Meiosis, you're reducing the number of chromosomes so that you can create your gametes, like sperm or eggs, that have reduce the number of chromosomes.